Hi guys, it's Katie here. Um, I know I always say that it's been a long time no see, but this time it really has been a super, super long time. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update that I um, took a little break from booktube. I just had a lot of life stuff going on. Um, but now I'm back and I've really missed making videos, so thank you for anybody who stayed subscribed and didn't give up on me and is back to hear more of my thoughts. Um, I also have a little announcement that I will be doing a bit of a name change, so uh, probably with my next video my channel name will have been changed to something different. Uh, I've just never really been um, very happy with my name, my channel name choice. Um, I kind of just picked it before I even really realized that I would make videos. Um, well, I've always wanted to make videos, but I never thought I would be brave enough to make videos. So, um, there's that. Uh, so look out for my new channel name. It'll be a surprise. Okay, so the actual point in this video, now that we've gotten all of that other stuff out of the way, is that I have read a lot of biographies already this year in 2017. I don't dislike biographies, but it's not, uh, something that I normally read a whole lot of. I usually do a few memoirs or biographies throughout the year, but I don't um, normally read them so quickly back to back, and that's not normally what I would read um, a lot of. So it's been a bit of a change for me. I started off um, just reading one randomly, and then it came up that my name was on a waiting list at the e-library for a couple of others. So that um, those came up a lot quicker than I thought they would, so I ended up reading those really fast. And then also I've joined a book club these past few months um, in my local community. We meet, it's through the library, but we meet at a local pub and it's called Beers on Tap or Books on Tap. Um, so we meet at the pub and we discuss a certain book each month. And um, it just so happened that for February, the book was The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. Uh, so I again was reading something that was um, something across between a biography and a self-help book, although I didn't find it to be too much um, self-help in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the four books that I've read, and I'm going to talk about them from least favorite to favorite, and we're going to start with, uh, what was it called? Anna Kendrick's book, and I can't think of the title right now, but I'll put it up on the screen when I can remember. Again, these were all e-library books, uh, with the exception of The Year of Yes, which was a physical copy, but it was a library book, and I've had to take it back since then, since our book club meeting uh, has already happened. So um, basically, with Anna Kendrick's book, I really wanted to like it. I really like Anna Kendrick. I've liked her for a long time now. Um, I have never seen Twilight or read Twilight, uh, to be honest, so I did not know her from the Twilight saga, but I I have seen her in quite a few of her other movies. I've always found her to be really funny in interviews and really endearing, so I really wanted to read her book. But I just found, um, I first of all, it was on audiobook, so maybe that had something to do with it. I'm still not 100% sure on my feelings on audiobooks. I don't hate them, but I, I find it harder to focus on what's happening. Um, so maybe that's part of the problem, but I did find that in listening to the audiobook, it seemed like a lot of themes were repeating. It seemed like she was using a lot of, um, what's the word? The same, the same way of pronouncing, pron oh, the same, uh, way of presenting her stories, uh, in each chapter that was, I think, supposed to be, um, funny in a self-deprecating way, but I've just found it to be kind of annoying. I think that um, as women, we tend to put ourselves down and we don't uh, boast a lot about our successes, which I'm guilty of as well, and I, I, again, don't like a braggart, but I do think that she tried to use self-deprecation and humor um, to kind of lessen her successes or lessen the hard work that she's put into things, and I just found it really grating almost. Um, I don't mind that, you know, here and there in the middle of it or for somebody to be really humble, but it just seemed like every chapter was the same device to kind of get you um, to the point of her story or just to see the point she was making about her career, and it just got a little bit annoying. Um, at the same time, I didn't hate the book. I did enjoy 
hearing a bit more about Anna Kendrick's life and hearing about the struggles that she went through. Um, I really liked the relationship that she has with her brother and I did find the book interesting. It was just that it was um, quite a, a lot to take in at the same time, um, feeling a little bit repetitive. So uh, I still would recommend reading it if you're a huge fan of Anna Kendrick, but I wouldn't say that it's a book that I would need to run out and buy or um, feel the need to recommend to a lot of friends. Um, okay, so the next book that I liked... Um, or the next book along the sequence, ending up at number one, my favorite. Uh, number three would have to go to Shonda Rhimes and the Year of Yes. I know a lot of people love this book and it's really well regarded. Uh, it's been talked about quite a lot, but for me, I just found, again, it was a bit repetitive. I thought that, um, I don't know, it just was kind of, she seemed very humble, braggy, which in real life I don't really enjoy that type of person so I don't know that we would be friends in real life. Uh, I did appreciate that she was um, a lot better than Anna Kendrick at owning her successes and being really proud of the work that she's put in and I think she definitely should be. Um, we all know Shonda Rhimes is, you know, any TV show that she puts out there is bound to be successful. She runs a huge or, um, company and she's like the ultimate girl boss, right? But um, I did find that it was very humble braggy and I just, I, but then at the same time, I feel like writing about yourself and writing about your life story and your successes would be really hard at the same time too. And I don't know how successful I would be at it. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'd be horrible at it. So, um, you know, I didn't hate the book at all. I did still really enjoy it. I just didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to love it. It just disappointed me a little bit. Um, I did really enjoy hearing the backstories about uh, her different TV shows, how they were made, how they came about, the different characters she related to, the ones that she loved. Um, I loved her analogies between the character Christina um, and her relationship with that character. And I really liked getting to know a bit more about Shonda Rhimes. There's a lot of things in the book that I found surprising. I didn't know about her, about her or um, wouldn't have guessed. And it was nice to um, kind of get some background behind the name and behind the person that we see accepting awards. So it was really an interesting read. I'm glad that we read it for book club, but I wouldn't say that I'm as excited about it as most people are. Um, okay, so the third book and number two on my list as to the ones that I really enjoyed are, um, it was Lauren Graham's, a, and what does she call it? I, something about talking fast enough <laughs> or talking too fast. Uh, it's really new out. I'll again put the title on the screen. Um, but I really enjoyed her book. I just thought that there was enough of a mix between early background um, and her struggling in her career and some background information about Gilmore Girls and her relationships now. Um, I thought it was a nice healthy balance between all of them. It had the right amount of sense of humor in it. Uh, it really felt like I was, um, I didn't listen to it on an audiobook. I actually read the physical book, but it felt like I could hear Lauren Graham's voice as I was reading it. It really seemed authentic and um, exactly like the Lauren Graham I would picture in real life. Um, I would love to be best friends with her in real life. I loved her in Yellow Girls, loved her in Parenthood, and I would highly recommend picking up this book if you were also a big fan of her work and a fan of her as a person. So really enjoyed that. Um, and the number one book, auto, or yeah, autobiography that I read was Amy Schumer's. Um, she, I, I'm, I like Amy Schumer. I'm not a huge fan of Amy Schumer. Um, so I was really surprised by how much I love the book, seeing as I'm not her biggest fan. I like her well enough, but it's not, um, somebody, you know, that I idolize or I read up a lot on or, um, just because she's in something doesn't mean I'm running out to see it, even though I do find her really funny. Uh, but it, she does have some problematic humor as well. And I see where people are coming from that don't like her. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a balance there, but I thought I would pick up her book and learn a little bit more about her. And, um, I thought her autobiography was the best, um, 
the most well written out of the four that I read. She really did a great job. I don't know if she had some help writing it or that was all her, although she does write her own comedy, so you know it could have been completely her writing this book without any sort of help from ghostwriters or anything like that. Um, and regardless, it was just really well written. I thought there was a great balance between a lot of humor, of course, because she's a comedian, but also um, she touched on some serious subjects. She had a couple chapters that were quite serious. Uh, she talks about her feelings on gun control uh, as many as well as many other things, which I found um, really well done. And even if you don't agree with her opinion, I thought good for her for putting that out there. It's really easy to not have an opinion as a celebrity as you don't want to isolate yourself from your fan base. Um, but she put it all out there and her feelings on certain subjects. And I just felt like that was really good for her. And she did it in a way that didn't sound too pretentious, at least I thought anyway. Um, and she also talked a lot about her childhood, which got, um, God, made me understand her as a person better. Um, and she talked about her relationship with her siblings, um, which I found really interesting. Uh, and she also touches on the subject that, you know, if she makes a sex joke, everybody, you know, slut shames with female comedians if they make sex jokes and assume that they are really promiscuous whereas if men do the same thing that you know they don't get the same response and uh, she talked a lot about how people automatically judge her and think she's really promiscuous but that's not necessarily the case and um, I really appreciated that viewpoint coming from her as well so I would really recommend picking up the book if you're even slightly a fan of Amy Schumer if you or if you want to know a little bit more about her um, I did find it to be a, a really well written book and I would recommend that one to almost anybody unless of course you're just really not into um, biographies or you know really dislike her as a person but even then you know maybe you could pick it up and learn something to appreciate about her as well um, I'm not saying everybody has to enjoy her comedy it's not everybody's cup of tea um, but you know maybe if you want to learn a little bit more about her and see where she's coming from then this might be the book for you as well so those are the four biographies that I've read so far this year. I'm not sure if there will be more, seeing as it's really heavily in the first quarter of the year that I've gone through these four biographies. But, um, you know, maybe there will be, and stay tuned to see if that does happen. Uh, again, thanks for sticking with me, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and um, your support really means a lot to me. So thanks so much for that, and I'll be back with a new video shortly. Thanks. Bye.